Welcome back. Reading the Bible with Loke. Job 36. Yeah, I stopped short yesterday. Bear with me a little longer and I will show you that there is yet more to say on God's behalf. I will bring my knowledge from afar and will ascribe righteousness to my maker. For truly my words are not false. He who is perfect in knowledge is with you. Behold, God is mighty and yet does not despise anyone nor regard any as trivial. He is mighty in the strength and the power of understanding. Lord, make me mighty in strength and the power of understanding. If I could just get a fraction of what you have. He does not prolong the life of the wicked but he gives the afflicted their justice. He does not withdraw his eyes from the righteous, those in right standing with him, but with kings upon the throne, he has them seated forever. Lord, I want to be seated forever. <laughs> with the kings. Yes, with my strength and my power and my understanding. I, I want all that, all that. But give me a second to let me revise that and make sure that's what I want to speak. I just don't want to be manifesting everything. So I'm going to come back. So we're gonna, I'm going to pause on that and we're going to circle back. <laughs> yeah, I want to make sure I'm specific. And if they are bound in bonds of adversity and held by cords of affliction... Then he declares to them the true character of their deeds and their transgressions, that they have acted arrogantly with presumptions and notions of self-sufficiency. He opens their ears to instruction and discipline and commands that they return from evil. If they hear and serve him, they will end their days in prosperity and their years in pleasantness and joy. But if they do not hear and obey, they will die by the sword, and they will die without true knowledge. But with the godless in heart, store up anger. They do not cry for help when he binds them with cords of affliction. They die in youth, and their life ends among the cult prostitutes. Cold with prostitutes. Though. All right, he rescues the the afflicted in their affliction. I would use that. You know, if you have somebody in your in your family who's who can't help themselves, you know, Lord rescue them from their affliction. Just like it says in your word, Father. Want to be specific, Job 36 15. Mm, and opens their ears in times of oppression. Then indeed, he enticed you from the mouth of distress and confinement into a broad place where there is no constraint or distress. And that which was set on your table was full of fatness, rich food. But you, Job, are full of judgment on the wicked. Judgment and justice take hold of you. Do not let wrath entice you into scoffing. I think of something else when I think of scoff. And do not let the greatness and the extent of ransom turn you aside. Will your wealth keep you from the confinement of distress or will all the force of your strength do it? Do not long for the night. Mm. I felt that because there's been times where I've longed for the night. <laughs> I had to get out in the streets, man. I had to get out there. There was something out there for me. 
Take heed and be careful. Do not turn to the wickedness. For you have chosen this vice of complaining against God rather than learning from the affliction. I mean, that's, yeah, I get it. That's great. And that's always um, easier said by someone that's not actually experiencing the affliction. So I get it. No, I'm totally, totally with you. But that takes, I think that takes just time. I think that, you know, just age, wisdom, for you to be like, oh, okay, that's what I'm going through right now. Lord, what do you want me to see? You know what I'm saying? Like, that takes, and sometimes when you're in it, you can't see that. Behold, God is exalted in his power, who is a ruler or teacher like him, who has appointed God his way, and can, and who can say to him, you have done wrong? Remember that you should magnify God's work of which men have sung. All men have seen God's work. Man looks at it from a distance. Behold, God is exalted and we do not know him. The number of his years are, are is unsearchable. I would use that. You know, something where Lord, you know, give me an example will be like, Lord, I ask that you impart wisdom for me as to this particular situation because I know the number of your years is unsearchable. I would, yeah. And I mean, there may not be, you know, someone needing prayer that you know right now or whatever. This is just stuff that I could use in a regular conversation that might cause somebody to take a couple steps back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, oh, that's how I feel. So, you know, just use it however you need to. That's why it's here. All right, let's see, starting back up, what's that, 27, for he draws up the drops of water, they distill rain from the mist, which the clouds pour down, they drop abundantly upon mankind. Can anyone understand the spreading of the clouds or the thundering of his pavilion? Behold, he spreads his lightning around him. That lightning is something else. I done seen the damages and done. It's something else. He spreads his lightning around him against the dark clouds. And he covers the depths of the sea. For by these mighty acts, he judges the peoples. He gives food in abundance. He covers his hands with the lightning. That's a bad man. And commands it to strike the mark. His thundering voice declares awesomely his presence. The cattle also are told of his coming storm. Oh, is that what that was? All right, we're almost at the minute. We'll at the, at the ten minute. We'll start at um, thirty-seven tomorrow, and the computer's back on point too. All right, so 37. Till next time, thanks for reading Bob Willow.